maker project and we're actually going to make this little clutch bag so this is craftsy.com i love craftsy there's lots of free projects there's some great paid projects as well they're really easy to follow so if you've not seen my video on uploading patterns to design space please do go and have a look at that we're going to very quickly go over it again so in order to upload a pattern it has to be a printable pattern at the moment you're unable to upload PDFs so if we click on the pattern piece so it brings us into the instruction booklet and if we scroll all the way down you'll actually see that there is a printable pattern and this is what we're going to use to upload into design space so we're going to go down to our window search and we're going to grab our snipping tool and all we're going to do is we're just going to draw around each of the pattern pieces and then we're going to save them and we're just going to save them as we would any image so once we've saved our printable pattern we then need to upload it to design space so we're going to go to upload we're going to browse for the file now there are three parts to this pattern and I'm going to upload them all now I'm going to upload them in the same way I'm going to write down what each of my pattern pieces are so for example this is a one inch square and it will always be a one inch square so we're going to save it as a simple and we're going to go to continue and I'm then just going to remove the outer part now if I remove this middle part and then I slice out my one inch I'm going to end up with a double cut and I don't want that, I just want a single line cut. So I'm going to leave this. So we're then going to go to continue. And you'll see it comes as a cut image and we've lost our instructions. So this is why I write everything down. If the pattern piece has got any instructions on it or any pieces that I need to add, I will write them down. So we're going to save this piece. So for example, you can see with this one, we've got two lines, we've got some writing and we've got a magnetic snap. Now the lines, I don't need those and the writing, I don't need those, but I do need the magnetic snap. However, I'm going to manually place that in using a circle. So there are ways around it and you do need to just look at your pattern and work out how you're going to work with it what way you're going to get the most use out of your pattern and your fabric. So again, I'm going to select a simple image and I'm just going to remove the outside. So this will become one solid cut, but I've already written down my instructions. So I know exactly what I need to do with this piece. So I'm going to go to continue. And again, I'm going to save as a cut image and then I'm going to bring the third piece in as well. You can see I've got my pieces on my canvas now. So the first thing I want to work with is my square. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it into a one inch square. I'm then going to go in and change the color to white. And I also want to change it from a cut to a right. And then I'm going to duplicate it as well. And that's all I want to do with my square. Now with my rectangles and my front flap, I want them to be the same size. So I'm going to change the height to 11 inches on both of these. And you'll see that they are then the exact same size, which is exactly what we want. I'm then again going to change the color on them to white. And again, I'm then going to duplicate each of these layers and I'm then going to hide those duplicated layers because we don't need those right now. So the next thing I want to make is my snap fastener. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab a circle. So this is just a guideline. So I'm going to have it at 0.7 inches. So I'm just going to change that to 0.7 and it's more for placement than size. The next thing I'm going to do is again, I'm going to change it to white and I'm also going to change it from a cut to a right. And then once again, I'm going to duplicate it. 
I'm then going to bring one of them over to my front flap and I'm going to make sure that I'm happy with the placement. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to go in, I'm going to highlight and I'm going to attach my layers together. So it's going to draw my circle and then it's going to cut my front flap shape. I'm then going to bring my front flap over and I'm going to sit it on top of the rectangle. I'm going to bring my other snap fastener over and I'm just going to arrange and move to front and I'm going to sit it directly on top of this one. I'm then going to hide my flap and I can then go in and I can attach these two pieces. And you'll see when I bring this one back, they are then sat on top of each other and those snap fasteners are in the exact same place. And that is what we want. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my two rectangles over. Again, I'm going to arrange to front on both of these. And you do need to remember that these are, again, drawing. And I'm going to place them in the corners exactly as my pattern shows me. And again, we're going to highlight both and we are then going to attach them all together so they become one. So this will draw our circle, draw our two squares and then it will cut out our rectangle. And this will do the same with this piece. The next thing I want to do is I want to duplicate this piece here and you'll see it's exactly the same. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to detach and I'm then going to remove my circle piece so I can just hide it. And I'm then going to go back in, highlight again and then attach my two squares together. So you can see that I've now moved these next door to each other. Now with this piece I want to flip it and I'm going to flip it horizontally. And then I'm just going to place that next to it. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to cut these all out in the same piece. And these are actually going to be our stabilizing layer. And the reason I've done it like this is I want to make the most out of my fabric. So I'm going to bring them all together and I'm going to attach them. And they are then going to cut out like this on our mat. And that's exactly what we want. So I want to hide this whole layer now. And I'm then going to bring back our other two white layers and these don't need any writing on them. So these are going to be our outside pieces and also our lining pieces as well. So again, I want two of these and then I want one of my front flap. Now with my lining, I'm going to have them all together. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to flip and I'm going to flip that horizontally and then I'm going to attach them and make sure that they all cut out together. So to avoid confusion, I'm just going to change the colour on these to red and then we can just hide that. And I'm then going to bring back my two pieces. Again, I'm going to duplicate my rectangle. Now, these I want them to cut out again together, but my front flap, I want it to be different. So this time, I'm only going to attach my two squares. And I'm just going to click Attach. And again, I'm going to change the colour on these just so that I don't get confused. And then I'm going to leave this one on its own because I want my front flap to be a different fabric. So we've then got our stabilizer layer, we've got our lining layer, and we've got our outside layer as well. So for these three layers here, we're going to select cotton as our fabric. And then for our stabilizing layer, we're going to choose fusible interfacing. Now, depending on your stabilizer, you'll need to choose whether it's fusible fleece or fusible interfacing. Mine is fusible interfacing, so that is what we're going to cut our first layer out in. So we're going to go ahead and sort our interfacing out, and we're also going to set our machine up with our washable pen and also our rotary blade. 
So I've got my pink 12 by 24 fabric mat here and I've got my fusible interfacing. Now it comes with a matte side and a shiny side. I always place it shiny side down on my mat. I don't know if that's the correct way to do it, but that's the way that I do it. And the reason I do it that way, especially if I'm working with pen, is that when you come to iron on your fusible interfacing, you iron it on using the shiny side. And so you want your pen on this side. It will, of course, bleed through, but I just, for me, I just find it easier. And I actually find it sticks better as well with the shiny side. And I've never had an issue with the shiny side being on the mat. It's never affected it. It's never become an issue when I come to iron it onto my fabric. So that's the way that I've always done it. And I will continue to do it that way as well. I'm then going to go in with my brayer and just make sure that that is fully adhered to my mat. And the other thing you can see is that my fusible interfacing is as close to my lines as possible. You want as much of this on the sticky part of your mat. The same with all of your fabrics. You want them all to be as much on your actual sticky part of your mat as possible. So I've already got my rotary blade in, but it is telling me I need to put my pen in. Now I'm using my Cricut washable fabric pen. So I'm just going to open up my A-clamp, place it in there. As soon as it clicks, I know that it's in place and I'm just going to then close my A-clamp. So you can see that it's drawn and it's also cut out. So we're just going to very gently remove our interfacing. And we can then go in and just peel those from our mat. So I've got some vinyl fabric here. This is the fabric that I use for my bows. This is from a rainbow of stitches. And actually my outer fabric is from a rainbow of stitches as well. And I will link to them. I absolutely love this. You'll see that I've changed my mat. I've put it on a purple mat. And I'm actually cutting it out in faux leather. So I'm going to change my blade from the rotary blade to the deep cut blade. And this is then going to cut out my front flap. You can see I've got my two front pieces of fabric and I've also got my fusible interfacing. And I've placed it shiny side onto the back of my fabric. And then I've just gone in with my easy press and I've pressed them for about 15 seconds evenly. And this this has then adhered my fusible lining to my fabric and it just gives it that bit more stability. Now I've got my outside flap here. Now I'm not going to adhere my fusible interfacing to my flap. I'm actually going to fuse it to my lining. So again, shiny side down. And I'm just going to go in with my easy press and I'm just going to press it for about 15 seconds in each area. So I've got the outside of my flap here and then I've got my lining and my fusible interfacing and I'm going to place it outside to lining and I'm just going to sit those on top of each other. I'm then going to go in and I'm going to sew around the semicircle, but I'm going to leave this top edge clear. I'm not going to sew that at all. I'm only going to sew around the outside of the semicircle. Whilst I'm at my sewing machine, I'm going to place my two front pieces with their interfacing front to front. And I'm going to make sure that my squares are on opposite sides of each other. And I'm just going to sew down the side, the bottom, and then up the side again. And again, I'm going to leave this edge completely clear. So I've sewn round the outside, and you can also see that I've made these slits all the way around. And this will just allow it to sit a lot nicer when we fold it over in a minute. I've also gone in and I've sewn all the way around my two front pieces with their interfacing. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to add our snap fasteners in. So I buy mine in a kit and I will link to it in the description below. And each snap fastener comes with four bits. So these two pieces go together and then these two pieces go together. So these two pieces here are going to go on the front of our bag and these two pieces are going to sit on our front flap. So before I turn this inside out, I just want to go through with my weeding tool and I'm just going to poke a hole all the way through in the middle. I've then got my rotary blade screwdriver and I'm just going to make the hole bigger and I'm just going to very gently start pushing that hole through. So you can see that I've pushed my front piece of my snap fastener all the way through. This is then poking through and we're going to add the second piece of our snap fastener on. Now your kit will come with several attachments so we're just going to sit this piece in here and you're then going to go in with a hammer. And that is now fully fastened on both sides. That is not going anywhere. Now with our front flap, we only want it going through one piece. You don't want your hole going all the way through, so you only want it on the front piece of your bag. So I'm just going to poke a little hole through with my weeding tool, and then I'm going to turn them inside out. So you can see I've created a hole here. This is the front piece of my bag and I've only gone through this layer. I haven't gone through to the back. I've got my two pieces. So this piece is going to sit on the inside. So you just want to poke it through your hole, just like this. Again, we've got another attachment and that's just going to sit underneath. We're then going to add our top piece on. We've got another attachment that comes with the kit and that is then just going to sit on top. And again, we're going to go in with our hammer. I'm then going to turn my bag back to the outside because we've still got a little bit of work to do on that. But I just wanted to get all my fasteners done. So I've got my lining fabric here and what I was saying earlier about reading your pattern is I forgot on my lining fabric I would actually need the writing of the squares. That's fine, I've just gone through and I've just traced it. I only need it roughly, but as I say, this is why you want to read your patterns. So I'm going to go with my lining fabric, I've put those on top of each other, and again, I'm going to sew all the way around these three sides, and I'm going to leave this one. So once you've sewn all the way around on both this piece, and your lining and you've added your snap fastener in you're then going to go in with a pair of scissors and this is going to seem frightening but I promise it's not frightening and where your marked out square is you're going to cut once you've cut them you're then going to pinch them together And you can then sew across here. You can then do the same for the other side. Just like this, you're going to sew across and you're going to do the same for your lining as well. So you can see that our lining is now all sewn up and I'm just going to leave this for a moment. So I've then turned my bag the right way round and I've also got my opening flap. So I'm then going to turn my bag over to the back and I'm also going to turn my flap round so the front is facing the back and I'm going to pin it all along. I am then going to sew the back of my bag to the front of my flap. So you can see that we've now sewn our flap on so that will then sit like that. And the last thing we need to do is add our lining. So you can see our lining is still 
the wrong way round and we want it to stay like that and we're actually going to place our bag into our lining so you can see my outside lining and I've placed my bag inside and I've got my lining to my flap and my flap has been pushed up against my bag and I'm going to sew all the way along here. This is then the front of my bag and I'm going to sew a few inches along this side and a few inches along this side but I'm going to leave this piece open. Once you've pulled it all through this opening you'll then see that it's all attached the way that it should be and you're just going to top stitch along this piece here so that you can close up this opening. <laughs> 